So, when you envision yourself, when you envision yourself working as a programmer for a big corporation, it's going to, things are going to move slow. There's a lot of documentation you have to do. There's SOX rules, Sarbanes-Oxley. You have to follow rules. You have to write documents. You have to, you'll have a project manager and he'll tell you, we need this document and this document. You need to test it. You need to test this before it goes into production. Actually use it. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, so my point is learning programming. This is a big point I wanted to make. Learning programming is actually kind of easy. Learning a programming language is kind of easy. If you learned how to make a web page and how to save data and how to do logic and then save it to a database and write reports, if you learned how to do that, that's great. You know how to code. The problem is every company you go to has a different problem. So your biggest challenge is not learning how to code. It's figuring out what they want you to code. So it's always very strange when I go into an interview, they ask me so many technical questions. Can you do this? Do you remember that? I sit there and think, yeah, I know that. I can Google that, right? My question is, what is it you want me to do? How bad is your code? Is your code good or is it bad? One of the biggest problems I've had in my entire career are, is bad code. I've walked into some places, especially as a contractor, and they said, here, fix this. Guess what? It was a nightmare. The code was thousands of lines. They, they didn't plan it out. Some bad programmer or programmers who aren't there anymore, they coded and coded and coded and they made a function. I saw a function once that was 2,500 lines long. To get to the middle of it, I had to scroll and scroll and they said change something in the middle of that. That's when programming sucks. When you have to deal with someone else's bad code and you have a deadline to do it. That's why when you interview for a job, you, they aren't interviewing me. When I interview for a job, they think they're interviewing me, but I'm actually interviewing them. I'm figuring out, do I want to work for you? Because I'll tell you right now as a programmer, especially with experience, I get emails every single day asking me, if I want to go work somewhere else. I get maybe one to three to five emails a day. I get tons of emails, but, but I'm at a good place right now and I like where I'm at. It's 10 times better than anywhere I've ever been. So I ignore those emails. I don't care. I only pay attention to those emails if I was upset about something or if I saw the future was going to be bad. So my point is if you become good and experienced, people will be knocking down your door to get you. It sounds great, but that doesn't necessarily mean going somewhere else is a good thing. I've left jobs that were bad and jumped into jobs that were worse. Worse. I'm like, oh man, I thought I had it bad. Now I've got it real bad. And it's all based on who your manager is, how the manager's management style is, how difficult is the code to fix, what kind of architecture do they have, how many tables. You could walk into a place that has 10 tables, that's easy to understand, or 5,000 tables, that's impossible to understand. That's why you need to ask questions in your interviews. And I know it's really difficult to actually find out anything in an interview because you really, when you start asking them questions, they don't really talk about it. They're like, well, I don't know, um, what kind of mainframe system? You know, they don't, they don't know or they don't tell you anything. So you, you end up interviewing, but not, you, Here's another thing. When you're interviewing, here's a tip. I hate, I'm sorry that this is so random because I could go on forever about this, but when you're interviewing, the feeling you get about those people, that's the, you're right about that feeling. So if you're interviewing and one guy is a jerk and you know, oh, he's the manager, guess what? You're right. He will be a jerk. You, that feeling you get about that guy is usually on target. Every time I've hi been hired for a job, I'm like, man, everyone's nice. That one guy seemed kind of, kind of harsh though. Guess what? He's, he was harsh all the time. Your intuition was right. Not saying that you shouldn't take the job or anything, but your intuition is probably right. Um, so it, interviews to me <clears throat> are usually done pretty poorly. Like I said, they ask you a bunch of technical questions and the reality is I, I, my technical stuff is good. Like I said, learning programming is not hard. It's applying it and fixing your code that may be impossible. 
You know, you may be replacing somebody that quit because they were angry, right? Why did they quit? Why, why, are you, why did you come into that company? Why do they need you so bad? That's something you need to know. Are you filling a, a position? Um, the money's good. If you find a good company, here's the good news. The, the money is good. Um, you do, it, it does seem to max out at a certain amount. When you get into the, if you're in the Midwest and you have a good stable job and you're in the 80,000, 90,000, 100,000 range, if you're in that range, you're not probably going to make a whole lot more than that because it just, that's just the max because, um, they're not going to pay more than 100, 110, 120,000 in the Midwest. I'm not talking about Silicon Valley, New York, all that stuff in the Midwest, you're going to max out about in the close to hundred thousand as a, as an experienced programmer, I started out at 30,000 and my first, my first raise was like 4% and I got 33,000. And then after a year and a half, I quit and moved to Chicago from Tulsa and I went up to like 50,000. And then my next job was like 65,000. That's how I moved within two or three years. I started out, got a little experience, quit and moved, quit and moved. And then I became a, a contractor consultant and then I made over 100,000 for a long time. <coughs> um, high pressure, um, working in Chicago was very difficult. Uh, I was a consultant so they would send me across the city all the time and so I was in lots of traffic, very stressful. Um, some of the people there weren't so nice, you know, some of the managers weren't so nice. So. Um, you, you will get paid, but you also pay with your stress. Anyway, that's just an opener. I, I wanted to get that out there. There's a million more things I could tell you, and I'm going to add them to more videos, but I just wanted to get this out there. This is intro to programming. This is what my experience has been like. It's, it's been, it's paid off very well. I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years. So if it sounds like I'm trying to discourage you. I'm trying to just tell you what the reality is. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm telling you, you can make a living at it. It can be good, but you have to learn how to deal with stress, learn how to deal with problems. You cannot let one little problem get to you because it is nothing but problems. Every day, something breaks every day. Something breaks everything every day. Constantly you're fixing problems. That's what you do. You're fixing problems, fixing. You're just fixing and fixing and fixing and you can't take it personally. You know, at first I would get so, when I was in college, I would get so angry. Like when I get a problem, I would get so mad. Like, man, I can't do this. Then I realized, wait a minute, this is how it's going to be. All right, I'm out. I'll tell you more later.